Hi guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. It sure is going to be a hot one today. A little after 2 o'clock and I heard it's already in the high 80s. Here in our neck of the woods. Alright. We are going to begin where we left off yesterday with Romans chapter 11, and we'll be reading verse 13 through verse 36. And we'll be reading in the New International Version. As it was requested. Alright. Let's begin. I am talking to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought consolation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. In some of the branches, if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be granted in. Granted. But they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God will not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise you also will be cut off, and if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be granted in. For God is able to grant them and again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be granted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in the part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake, but as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable, just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too now may receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience, so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God! How unsearchable his judgments and his past beyond tracing out! Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him 
and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And that's where we'll stop with Romans. Now we'll be going to Psalm 22, and we'll be reading verses 1 through verse 18 of Psalm 22 today. It's another beautiful psalm of David. For the director of music to the tune of the Doe of the Morning, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish, my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Does that sound like to you guys? Does that remind you of anybody? They pierced my hands and feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. Don't you recall hearing the same thing about Jesus when he was crucified? His hands and feet were pierced. They mocked him. He was there for everybody to see. They cast lots for his garments. I just wanted to point that out. All right, guys. Lastly, for our Bible reading today is going to be Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. And that says, The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Okay, guys, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.